Welcome to Promote Profit Publish. I'm your host, Juliet Clark. Before we get started today, I want to remind you to go over and like us, follow us over on YouTube, Superbrand Publishing. And don't forget to go over and write us a review. Obviously, you're listening. So love to hear a review from you guys. And if you get a chance, go take our Promote Profit Publish quiz. Uh, it's at www.promoteprofitpublishquiz.com. Today's guest is someone I met on LinkedIn. Her name is Taylor Shanklin, and she is a speaker, podcast host, and a marketing innovator in the nonprofit sector. With 13 years experience, well, she doesn't even look like she's 13. Wait till you see her, you guys. With 13 years experience in nonprofit marketing, branding, fundraising, and technology, Taylor is the vice president of marketing at Pursuant, a fundraising agency that helps organizations raise more money through data-driven strategies. She's also the founder and host of Soar Podcast, a podcast dedicated to helping people live and work happier by tapping into their focus, passion, and achieve liftoff. So welcome, Taylor. Hey, Juliet. It's good to be here. Um, I attribute wearing sunscreen every day and drinking a ton of water to well, well, um, keeping a youthful you, appearance. <laughs> how old are you, may I ask? I'm 37. Oh, well, good for you. I drink lots of yeah. water, sunscreen as well. I don't think I've had sun on my face and probably since I was 30, and I just turned 59. So yeah. Keep it up, girl. It works. I just own being pale. I, I own it. You know, yeah. I just, I'm, I'm pale and I own it. <laughs> yeah. I, my face is pale, but the rest of me, not so much. I've had, I've had pieces removed from skin cancer. So it's good that you're doing that. If you really, if I'd known today, what I knew back, what I didn't know back then, I probably would be in better shape. So we're going to talk about today sort of scrappy marketing because for a lot of nonprofits, they don't really have the money to market. True. So because I've been in this sector for a long time and I've worked with nonprofit organizations and at startups within my industry, um, I've just gotten really good at being scrappy with marketing. And I think what's interesting about the world we live in today is you can be scrappy more easily than, than way back when um, in terms of marketing and stuff. So I think there's a lot that people can do that's well within their budget um, that maybe they just don't know about or just don't think. Maybe they even just have a mental block of like, well, I just can't afford that. And I, I think it's first about getting beyond that mindset and then second about getting creative and figuring out, well, what tools are out there that are even maybe free for marketers to use and content creators to use? That's great. So let's talk about some of those free tools that people may not know about. What's, what is at the top of your list? Uh, top of my list, I love Canva. Um, nonprofits, if you're a nonprofit, you can get it for free. I pay for it. It's $12.99 a month. And I literally, I use the app on my phone. I use the desktop application. I work between the two. And in terms of thinking through like marketing and content creation, it's a really great tool to get ideas, um, to go in and be a designer. Maybe if you don't have a design resource on tap or you can't afford a designer. Um, I get just so scrappy with it. I mean, I even create things like while I'm out walking my dog, I just pull out like maybe I started something on the desktop application and then I'll pull out my phone and work on it a little bit. And so that's one of the ones on top of my list. Um, I also think video. Um, tools, the one that we're using, Zoom is a great one. That's high on my list. Um, what is it? $14.99. I pay for the premium version. You can use it for free. Um, and Zoom is a great tool to be able to record videos, have conversations like this and put content out. So I think in terms of like a couple of things that are top on my list are just look at what really good and inexpensive and often free tools are out there for content creation, like start there. There's also some things like ebook creators now. Um, I've dabbled in those where you can, maybe you've written a blog post and you wanna turn it into something that's an ebook that's like a, a lead magnet. Um, there was one I was dabbling around with recently called Designer, um, where you literally, all you do is plug in the URL of your blog post and it takes it and uses 
you know, robots and everything like that to make it look into this cool looking ebook. And so there's a lot of tools like that out there that are um, not expensive, that are easy to use and really um, available these days for marketers. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. Um, into, into, so I'm just writing this down into eBooks since I'm sure they're going to want to put that in the show notes. So from the standpoint of, um, you know, using something like an eBook and making it into a blog post, does it make it into a good enough eBook that you could publish it? I think so. I mean, like there's some nuancing. You're going to have to go in and it's going to give you a template and then you can customize the template. But I started making one last weekend. I was at home, my family was out skiing. I stayed home and I was like playing around with stuff and saw this one and like, it's pretty good. It takes a little bit of nuancing and that sort of a thing. Like how do you actually get it formulated to look really good like an ebook with the right headers and, you know, titling, styling and all of that. But I, I I think it's doable. Yeah. I think there are also other ways to outsource content creation like that. So a couple of other tools top on my list that I use frequently frequently are um, hiring freelancers through sources mm. like Fiverr mm-hmm. and work. I have found amazing designers to help me with things like eBooks on um, those tools, um, you know, audio and video resources are great ways to go and find people all across the globe. You can look at their reviews. You can look at their, um, you know, portfolio on those services, you can see the kind of work they've done. And then you can kind of have people bid on your jobs. And it's a great way to find other people to pull in quickly. Uh, Particularly if you have something that's just project based, and you're like, well, I can't bring on a staff member to do this, or maybe you don't even want to hire an intern or anything that formal. But you can go and you can find really good freelancers on those places. Yeah, you can. But you sometimes you have to, when you go into that relationship, you have to be prepared to spend money and not be happy with something too. Because some of them are very good. When I go in, because I do have some Fiverr people that I use, um, I look for people who can turn it around in the time I need that have five stars that are the top of the crop. I rarely use anybody that's brand new. Because yeah. I, if, if somebody has, you know, 100 jobs or 200 jobs and five-star rating, I know that they're going to be someone that I want to work with. So if you yeah. have to, if you use something like Fiverr, be aware that of going in and there are different ways that you can search. And mm-hmm. usually I'm instant gratification girl when I decide I want something, I want it tw- within 24 hours. So, um, <laughs> you know, you can look by 24 hours, you can look like by... Um, I forget what they call them. They're not, they're sort of skill levels. How many? They do have skill levels and I agree with you too. I always look for people with high ratings. I mean, I treat that the same way that I treat buying a product on Amazon where I'm like, what's the, you know, number of reviews to um, number of stars ratio sort of a thing. And it's like, I'm looking for, I want more reviews. The, the more reviews, the better. Mm-hmm. And then obviously higher up on the star rating. I think if you find people like that, you're going to get someone who's going to do reputable work. I have hired one or two folks where it was like, okay, that, that didn't work out. But um, to go into it open-minded, as you said, knowing that that's going to happen. But the majority of work that I've gotten done through those services has been very good. Yeah, me too. In fact, I have a vendor that I used a lot back at graphics back in, I would say 2013, 2014. And he found me on uh, LinkedIn. And yeah. now, now I use him and I contract him directly. I don't go through Fiverr because they lose so much on Fiverr too. They lose a lot of the money that you, and it's five bucks. So imagine <laughs> you're losing they like half, uh, half of your five bucks. <laughs> they do. My other recommendation on that is, yeah, if you find someone and then you can figure out, um, I hope Fiverr's not listening. It doesn't cut off my account. I know. That's what I was going to find out. Me too. <laughs> and pay them otherwise. Yeah, do that. And then stick with them, you know? So like yeah. I have a couple of designers that I've found to free, freelancers that now I stick with them and they, they do a lot of work for me. And so um, find someone who's good and then really like give them good business and they'll treat you well. And they'll yeah. turn your stuff around faster too. You know, if you're good to them, they're good to you. 
Yeah, exactly. And a lot of them appreciate, even though it sounds like, oh, it's only 20 bucks here or there. Some of those countries they live in, that's, that's good wages. I, I, exactly. So, you know, don't, don't be shy about that. Um, what other things? I'm, I'm going to share. Have you used repurpose.io yet? No, I haven't. What's that? Well, so it's uh, Hanny Mora's uh, platform, and I think it's twenty dollars a month, and it'll actually take your podcast and turn it into snippets. Ooh. So you can use it for LinkedIn. You can put uh, different. I don't want to say graphics. I'm not very good at this uh, doing these myself, but like wording, you can do different things and and post it on Instagram. So it's a it's a really cool tool as well. Repurpose.io. Okay, I'll check yeah. that out. Yeah. That gives I, me thinking on a couple more. Um, yeah, and actually, uh, yeah. well, by the time this airs, you won't know, but Monday Marketing uh, on the 24th of March, we're going to have him on demoing. So if you're awesome. on Facebook, go check out the Monday Marketing Mixer. Okay. Um, but yeah, a lot of really cool little tools out there that you can do these things with that aren't really expensive. And that's, that's yeah. what I always look for. Because I know, I don't know about your clients, but my clients are always like, well, I'm already paying for Infusionsoft or you know, one of those big mm. uh, CRMs. And so when you start piling all this stuff on, you know, it adds up. It does. And it can add up. And one thing you do have to be weary of is it's really easy to sign up for like a free trial and then not use it and then forget about it. And then later look at your credit card. You're like, what is this? Why am I be, be, being billed? And so that is one thing in our subscription based world that we live in now mm -hmm. that um, like I recommend some due diligence around once a month. I kind of go into like my Apple subscriptions and look at what I'm signed up for yeah. and clean house on things where maybe I tried it out. I signed up for the free trial. I didn't really like it. Um, and then I want to go make sure I turn that off. I also sometimes now when I, this is something I'll do is I'll sign up for a free trial. If it's seven days, I'll then set a reminder on my phone and say, Hey Siri, remind me in five days to look at that subscription again. And then I'll decide if I like it at that point or not. And I'll decide if I want to keep paying for it or if I want to go and cancel it, because that is something that can it, those $7.99, $12.99, $14.99 nine charges, if you have a lot of them, that can add up and that can get to be not so scrappy. So you do have to watch out for that. Yeah. I don't have that problem with my tech apps. It's exercise apps where mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I'm going to do rebel yoga instead of going to the gym. And I go, I either go to the gym or I do neither. I have to be really transparent here. <laughs> no. so but I don't do the yoga. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you and I have that same thing in common. Uh, yeah, those those ones add up. I agree, and it's like, yeah, I either don't do anything or I go to the gym. There's something about going to the gym that makes me feel like I'm I'm in that place, right? And whenever I try to sign up for those at home things, of like, I don't know, I'm at home. I'd rather just watch TV and eat some ice cream. <laughs> There you go. Because you know what's funny is I'm motivated to go outside and do something, but it's just like when I have to sit and you know turn on the TV or music. But but we digress here. So yeah, what other yeah. tools it works for some? It works for some. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Like I go on a hike every morning, but mm -hmm. uh, there's something about going outside that's different than doing a program on the TV. And yes, you know. it definitely is. So what other uh, recommendations can you make for us? Yeah. So you mentioned a couple of other little things, um, uh, a, a couple of other tools that come to mind too. The, the one that you said that, um, that makes little snippets out of your podcast is cool. Um, there's one called Lumen5 that makes little video snippets out of blog posts and things like that. So similar, wow. it'll take written content that you already have up on the web, or you can upload like a Word doc or a PDF and it'll take that and it'll make it into little video snippets mm -hmm. because videos catch people's attention more. So that's a good one. And then um, there was one other one I was thinking of that I'm blanking on a little bit. It'll come back to me. Um, but you know, one thing that is also, I think a, a really important thing to be doing right now and, and what it takes is your time not necessarily like investment and, you know, hard costs, but your time is really thinking about how you build a, a personal brand and engagement on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And so I've got a lot of recommendations and, and ideas around that just based on what I've done and what I've worked, found works and what doesn't work. 
And I think when companies think about how to build that out and use LinkedIn as a marketing tool, they need to be thinking about how do they support employees that have a voice, that are representative of the company, that can get on there and post authentic and relevant and meaningful things to the industry that we are in. But we're not going to ask them to post about the company all the time because guess what? When you just post about your company all the time, no one cares. Like it gets boring. It gets (laughs) old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next, right? And so when companies think about embracing LinkedIn as a marketing channel, they need to just get it out of their head that it's a sell, 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 sell sort of a platform. Uh Uh-uh. It's an engagement platform. It's a relationship building platform. It's a value add platform. And so when you look at all of these different social platforms, and I'm harping on LinkedIn just as one because I think it's effective when you do it the right way, Mm -hmm. is bring value to people, build up your staff as thought leaders in your industry, and have them post interesting things on LinkedIn that actually starts conversations. Because then what happens is humans, we go, oh, hey, that person at that company always posts interesting stuff. And I'm going to keep tuning into them. And then by the way, what is that company? Let me go actually see what they do. So it's a longer game effect to get there. But I think it's the right way to get there. I think if you do it the short-sighted way, where you're like, just post about our webinars all the time. Like people are going to tune you out and you're not going to get the results you want. That is so true. And it was interesting. I had a call with a gentleman yesterday who was talking about, he has a smaller company and he's the one that typically sells in his company. But he says a lot of times he will hand off the new client to one of his staff. And he was asking me about that, like, how do I do that in a way that they don't that think it's a bait and switch? And what you just positioned is exactly how you do that. If that person is out yeah. on social media and they're posting on behalf of the company and they're posting interesting things, it's almost it, it's not so much a bait and switch as, as I'm the head thought leader, but I have lots of thought leaders that work with yeah. us as well. Yeah. yeah. Empower your people you know, empower your people on those kinds of channels and where they have maybe a network or um, a following or a voice, you know, I think that that's important. Yeah, it really is. So Taylor, where can we find you if we want more? Well, you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, (laughs) D-A-Y-L-O-R-S-H-A-N-K-L-I-N. I do post a lot on there. Um, you can go to my website. It is www.soar, S-O-A-R dot how, H-O-W, soar dot how. That is where I have information about my podcast. And you can go and you can click over there to go to my podcast site and subscribe on any of your favorite podcast players. It's, I got it on everything. Um, you can also shoot me an email taylor at soar.how and reach out and get in touch that way if you want to riff on some ideas that we talked about here today. Oh, that's so cool. Thank you so much for being on. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It was fun.